Hello again, this is Dr. Tony at Chiropractic Clinic in Upland. I run also the host of Crooked Spine Show. I'm, do, I'm here with Dr. Calvin Hargis. He's my guest today. I'm going to go through overall, if you want to call a synopsis, where our talk's going to be about. Our biggest concern is there's a huge pandemic of chronic pain in America. It's been this way for a long time, and even with technology, still getting worse. That's a big concern. Over 50% of, of all doctor visits are from the spine or body pain. And, it, and also, a lot of people now are having to pay out of their own pocket uh, for their medical care, correct? But That's sometimes true. we're given unnecessary tests or procedures that doesn't help with the diagnosis and especially the treatment to make ourselves overall better. And in the notes, too, as, as Dr. Calvin had mentioned, too, is 141 medical schools in the U.S. actually train people to deal with some pain, but the only part 50% of actually to overall training is for spinal care um, and also treatments of spinal chronic pain. So we understand with, with chiropractic, what we do now too, how do we overall help people? Dr. Dr. Hargis is a chiropractic orthopedist. So explain what actually is, chiropractic orthopedist actually is, and also the author of Healing the Human Machine. We'll go over that book also too, and actually what that, how that helps you become someone that can help your overall self, get yourself better, even outside your overall health insurance sometimes. He's a creator of several home tools help your pain sufferers like yourselves for one too. And he and, and basically is here to help understand a better solution to fix your pains and give us the research why. So Dr. Hargis, introduce yourself, my friend. Uh, well, thanks, uh, Dr. Radjevic. Uh, it's nice to be here. Um, I'm Dr. Cal Hargis. I'm a board certified chiropractic orthopedist. That means I've had uh, uh, three and a half to five years of additional training after chiropractic college. Uh, which was four years. So I've actually um, received a lot of instruction in dealing with the chronic pain. Um, there's probably about a thousand or perhaps less chiropractic orthopedists in the United States. It's a specialty uh, and chiropractors can specialize in various areas. Uh, I did orthopedics because I think it's more germane to my population because most of my patients that I see have either, either spinal pain or some form of body pain. And what chiropractic orthopedists do is they try to help our patients with their chronic pain, diminishing their pain without surgery. So that's very important. Now, when you introduced the show, uh, you mentioned the 141 medical schools uh, in the United States. Um, I just want to go back there and clarify that a little bit. Good. Of the 141 medical schools in the United States, only 15% of them require any instruction whatsoever in treating chronic pain, spinal or other types of body pain. And of those 15% that mandate any training at all in the diagnosis and treatment of chronic pain, that those 15% of those schools um, only require one to three weeks of instruction. So the point is, is that the medical profession knows nothing about treating chronic pain, not a bit. And so what they do know how to do though, very well is give medication. Mm -hmm. And they get two or more years of pharmacology. Now in chiropractic school, we don't dispense as practitioners. We don't dispense medication. So we get very little pharmacology in chiropractic school. But what we do get is a very serious concentration in understanding how to diagnose and treat chronic pain. Because not knowing how to, uh, not knowing pharmacology and not being able to dispense medication means that we have to get our patients better very fast. We have to be very accurate in what we do. We have to be very good at what we do. Otherwise, our patients walk. And so the real experts in dealing with chronic pain are chiropractors, not MDs. Well, that makes sense to where we're specialists, correct? We've gone through just one thing. I mean, and obviously medical doctors can specialize also. But when you go to your primary care doctor as a patient with them, you're not going to see a specialist right away. You're going to get something that, at least on the West Coast for us in California, right. is where the first step is, what kind of medication do you want? What's good for you? 
Right. And then if it does get better, maybe physical therapy and then a surgeon for one too. But you're spending weeks and sometimes even months now, especially after COVID, waiting for the next doctor, waiting to get better, waiting for ribbon. First, if someone comes in today to see a chiropractor, they want to know how long is it going to take. Well, What's you know, that? that's that's true, uh, Dr. Rackford. But um, it's even more, um, it's more complex than that. Most of the patients I see have soft tissue injuries. Uh -huh. um, if I see 20 patients, I can be sure that 19 have soft tissue injuries. And the reason for that is short of breaking the bone. And even if we do, the only thing we can injure is connective tissue. Yep. So that might be muscle, tendon, whatever. Those are internal injuries. And usually they're muscular, or at least a large portion of the injury is muscular. And when we injure muscle, we tear fibers. And so the common um, uh, advice given to most patients by medical doctors is to heat, stretch, and massage. But those types of treatments rarely help soft tissue injuries because the injury is internal. So massage, stretch, and heat are akin to pulling the scab off the wound, uh -huh. except the wound is inside. And so chiropractors have a unique knowledge in how to treat these injuries that the medical profession does not. And so what I would like to emphasize in addition to that is the safety of chiropractic care. Now, when I was researching my book, Healing the Human Machine, uh, which I did some extensive research uh, going back uh, several years, but this book was published in uh, about two years ago. I actually did so much research that I included 167 citations in the book. Great. But the, um, the point is, is that uh, chiropractors um, are, chiropractic care is extremely safe. In my area, geographic area, which is Orange County, New York, the, my, the primary doctors here, your GPs and internists, pay anywhere from twenty dollars to $25,000 a year in malpractice. Surgeons pay about $150,000. OBGYNs pay about $200,000 a year. As a chiropractor, I pay less than $3,000 a year. Now, Malpractice insurance is based on claims made. So you can see right away that chiropractic care, the safety of chiropractic care has been misunderstood for years. It's extremely safe. It's almost the actuaries that actually do the risk, if you want to call it uh, risk of being, for example, someone with life insurance. Mm -hmm. uh, they take all the risk factors and go, okay, here's all your risk factors. Here's how we put it in a formula. This is going to be your premium. Right. Thing, risk factors for medical doctors, for chiropractors too, risk of causing injuries, risk of causing a fall. For example, anesthesiologists have, have far as I know, have even higher amounts of malpractice costs, even more than OBGYNs. Yes, I'm sure that's true. So it's almost like if you can if you take their objective finding and look at that, okay, and then I can make an objective comparison of who, like you said, who is a higher risk, just to back up what you're saying. Yes, absolutely. It's true. And not only that, but study after study has shown that patients are far more mm -hmm. um, happy, satisfied with chiropractic care for whatever condition they're being treated for, uh, as opposed to a medical treatment. Uh, and the results are much, much better, and the costs are much less. So why is this not public knowledge then? I think that the, the main thing, and people... Um, tend to do what they've always done. Mm -hmm. You know, they get accustomed to um, the practices and procedures that they go through every day. So they never think outside the box. They never think about going to an alternate uh, practitioner or a different practitioner. And that's a shame. Um, so I think that people just need to have a new mindset about the safety and effectiveness of chiropractic and what it is we're actually learning uh, and doing in our in our studies. Uh, I mean, our, our education is fairly similar in many ways to medical doctors. Um, we don't get much pharmacology, of course, because we don't dispense medication. But we do receive two or more years 
uh, in learning to, to read and diagnose x-rays, MRIs, and CT scans. Now, medical doctors don't get that. They don't get any instruction in that area unless they go into radiology. And so um, the training is different, but ours is much more focused on musculoskeletal and spinal. What's amazing when a, a patient like as yourself, they come back with, and they had an MRI out of their back, for example, and now their doctor says, well, we think you have this. And, and it's usually the, the medical doctor has no idea what they're reading. They're just reading off a report from a radiologist right. that did all the work for him. Absolutely. And studies have shown that MRIs are amazingly inconsistent. Mm -hmm. um, they did a large study with over 700 people that had never had back pain. And they sent these studies to three different radiologists to be read, each study of these Good. over 700 people. And they saw a large percentage of uh, herniations on these MRIs. And there were, was absolutely no back pain associated with it. Exactly. So, you know, every time I see a patient who's got an MRI and the medical doctor has said, aha, here's your problem. You've got a herniated disc. I'm very skeptical of that because, in fact, it could be something that's been years old and now they're seeing it on an MRI. It's far, far more common to have a muscular soft tissue injury causing low back pain, neck pain, or whatever, or a spinal complaint, a pinched nerve, some sort of problem with the spine, uh, than it is to have an out and out right uh, disc herniation, as you well know. Well, and then, and, and going to that too, when you see a patient, are they coming in? What, what is your normal, I guess, or, or demographics of your patients that come in to see you as a chiropractor orthopedist? What is your normal demographics there in, uh, in uh, New York? I would say 50% of the people I'm seeing have low back pain, 30% mm -hmm. have neck pain. A lot of people have various complaints. They may hip, may have hip pain, low back pain, and neck pain. And yep. very often they'll come in and say, and I've also got carpal tunnel and my elbow hurts. And I'll say, okay, wait a minute. What's that's, your primary, what's your, what's your primary complaint? You what's know? your primary? Let's yes, focus right. on that. I said, what's, you know, or give me a number, like 10 is the worst, zero is perfect. How bad is your back pain? How bad is your neck pain? Let's start with what's hurting you most, and we'll go from there. And um, so that's what happens very often. But, you know, I see everything. I see TMJ. I see carpal tunnel knee problems, whatever, you know, and we have to treat all that. And again, we have to be very effective because we're not giving medication. Well, and the one thing is we're, we, we've, I've done it for 22 years. I uh, don't long and I have doc. A lot of it is your experience, your knowledge, your confidence, your schooling to you take that all in one pot. Right. And it comes more and more with every patient. So you see, so you feel more confident sure. in something that you may not have coming out of school. Right. Yeah. And if you really want to help people, you're doing a lot of research on your own. You're asking yourself every day, why did this work? Why did this not work? Mm -hmm. And so what you learn is over time is that your patients are teaching you, mm -hmm. you know, they're the best school that you can possibly get. And if you've been doing this for 20 years, my gosh, you're an encyclopedia of knowledge. If you've been doing it for 40 years, like I have, that that knowledge base gets a little broader. So, you know, it's, uh, it's great. Um, but, you know, again, you're not using medication. You've got to be spot on. Mm -hmm. You know, if I'm not getting, and you know this too, Tony, if you're not getting results within two, three, four visits, oh. yeah, patients exactly. are out the door. Yep. yep. You know, because they, in today's uh, culture, we don't have a great deal of patience. And Americans in, in particular, they want fast results. So you have to give that to them. Especially New Yorkers and Southern California people too. We yeah. we're, we're we're boom boom boom. We want things. Yeah, we're fast. Yes, and yeah. then with, with your overall, once you see a patient, say for for back pain, neck pain, how do you assess? Them? What's your assessment tools? I want I want to pick your brain myself, Doc. I don't understand what you do over there on the East Coast. What I do when I see some, let's say somebody comes in for back pain. Yeah. All right. First of all, I ask them. You know, um, does, is your pain localized or does it radiate? If it doesn't radiate, I know that it's localized. It's either some sort of a focal dysfunction, all right? Mm -hmm. Maybe it's muscular. Maybe it's something with the pelvis or the lumbar spine. But that's what I where I go. 
I also ask them how they sleep, how they sit, how they work, what they do, what their job is, what they, how they're resting at night when they get home. I even ask them about nutrition because all of these things play into it, as you know. Mm -hmm. um, I have them, first of all, I'll have them disrobe partially. I'll have the women put on a gown so it opens in the rear. Um, if they want to have a nurse in the room, I'll bring one in. But no one ever asks for that. Um, and then I'll just take a good basic look at their posture. You know, studies have shown that 50% of the population has a short leg, okay? As you well know, and you also know, I'm sure, that a leg length difference is the largest reason for chronic back pain or hip pain and degeneration uh -huh. or knee pain, foot pain, other things. So first thing we do is we look at posture. Of course, we would do that with someone with scoliosis because again, the largest reason for scoliosis is a leg length inequality. Okay. They've okay. done extensive studies on that. Not so much in the United States, interestingly, but yes. other countries where they tend to keep medical costs down instead of in the United States where they like to pump them up. If mm -hmm. you get my meaning. Yes. So anyway, we do the posture analysis Then I'll lay the patients down on the table. And then I start challenging their muscle structure. I am actually pushing into muscle groups and checking the lower back and then the uh, buttock area, hip area, and the upper leg. And typically, patients will say, ouch, you know, that really hurts. Mm -hmm. And I'm not pushing on the spine. I'm pushing on muscle tissue. And that is the simplest way right there to know if you're dealing with a muscle strain. You have a patient who does not have radiating pain to the foot. They have localized pain in the back. They have muscle pain when you press into the muscle tissue. And then I also press into the spine deeply. Okay. And I want to see if I can um, elaborate some pain by doing that. And if I find a painful spine, then I know there's inflammation there too. And that could be uh, an indication of subluxation or misalignment in the spine or some sort of derangement there. So sometimes I'm dealing with a, a multifactorial problem. Maybe there's a muscular component. Maybe there's a spinal component. Maybe there's a leg length difference. So all of these things we have to evaluate. And if you don't get to the root of the problem, let's say a person has a leg length problem. Say it's a half an inch. If we don't address that somehow, uh -huh. uh, then we're sending them out of the office and they're just waiting for their next episode to start, right? Yep. Now, the interesting thing about radiology, and I don't know if you've noticed this, you probably have, but when medical doctors, medical radiologists read x-rays of the lower back or in a scoliosis study, uh -huh. if there is a large difference in the leg length from one side to the other, they never comment on no. that. No. Have you ever seen that in a report? No, never, never. Okay. So now let's say that I have a child with scoliosis and I'm noticing that this child is getting crooked, right? Mm -hmm. Out of balance. Okay. I'm taking that child to my radiologist, first the pedi uh, uh, pediatrician. Sure. He sends me to the radiologist. The radiologist does the study. Let's say the radiologist sees a difference in the leg length, but never comments on it. Then he sends the report back to the pediatrician. The pediatrician has no idea there's a difference in the leg length. Neither does the child's parents. And so they just slowly watch the curvature progress uh -huh. over time, over years. Now, studies have shown a doctor by the name of Volkman did some interesting studies where he either compressed portions of a rat's tail or stretched the tail. Okay. And what they found was when he compressed the bone, the bone actually morphed and changed and became concave on the pressure side. And away from the pain, got it. Okay. Yeah, it was actually diminished mm -hmm. in its size on the pressure side and was trashed or stretched on the non-pressure or traction side. So in other words, 
You know, the spine is a teeter-totter. It's 24 movable bones set on a pelvis. If the pelvis is unlevel, yes. the spine is going to be curved. Now, on the concave side of the curve where there's more pressure, the bone starts to deform. It mm -hmm. starts to actually narrow and decrease in volume. And on the traction side, the convex side of the curve, it actually tractions and enlarges. So what is, uh, <clears throat> in the beginning, just uh, a balancing curve in the spine can actually move on to become a structural curve when the bones change. This is when they're still juveniles, correct? Before Yeah, when the spines are soft in children. Got it, got it, got it. So this is a big problem. And the one biggest problem, I think, in treating uh, kids with scoliosis and chronic low back pain people is that radiologists are not reporting properly on leg leg problems. Well, that's why I always ask, let me see the x-rays. Let me Absolutely. See. I, it's, I always tell them, it's a picture. I'm going to interpret it maybe differently than your medical doctor would. Right. Maybe even, even the radiologist would. Even your orthopedist. Maybe, maybe I'll do differently to give you a different result. Right. And the that's thing the thing you have to understand about the orthopedist is he has the same uh, minimal training in medical school that everyone else gets. And then when he becomes, goes into residency as an orthopedist, all he's doing is studying surgeries. It's, he it's, never understands the basic conservative ideology of how to treat back pain or any other condition from a conservative standpoint. It's almost you should you should almost have a double word if you want to call it orthopedic surgeon, neurological neuro, neurological surgeon. They should always say that because that's their priority. Right. How do they figure out at what point are they going to cut versus wait and see? Right. Yeah. And so a lot of times they're as in the dark about how to treat things conservatively as any other doctor. Exactly. You know? Exactly. And my problem with, with that is a basic, there's a basic dishonesty here. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just going to call it straight. You know, if medical doctors were honest with their patients, when you went in to see them, they would simply say th to that 55% of their patients who are coming for chronic pain, they would simply say, hey, I don't know how to treat you. Mm -hmm. And that is why we have billions and billions of dollars spent on medical care and excessive medical testing that is, you know, getting us nowhere and why we have such a huge chronic population of pain sufferers in this country. It's almost amazing where, why get an MRI and why do this if there's not going to be a change or if not going to actually help somebody? Right. Even medic like your medic medications also had two seniors come in this last week. They've been medicated for over 10 years and never seen a result. Right. Yeah, that's true. And, um, you know, I have patients all the time that come in and said, say, I'm in chronic pain. I had a negative MRI. My doctor doesn't know what to do with me. Uh, I've even had patients come in and say, my doctor thinks that I'm faking that my pain is psychosomatic, yep. uh, I'm a hypochondriac, uh, I'm at the end of my rope, uh, or I pay other patients say, I've seen four doctors, um, you know, they don't know what to do. Um, well, and then what they'll, what they'll, 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 they'll do something, they'll put more medication on top of that medication, more medication right. on top of that medication. Psychosomatic, let's give you some antidepressants. Right. Let's do this. All of a sudden, this person is so numb, they don't feel anything. But the thing is, like you had mentioned before, their quality of life, Doc. Yeah. Their quality of life. Where are they? Yeah, it's terrible. Yeah. That, that's what I worry about. Even with scoliosis, I had a patient, uh, called, called, actually Neela, I see her for probably over 10 years now. Her mom's a pediatrician, had scoliosis, took her to the orthopedist and said, well, what do you want to do? And the orthopedist said, well, we'll wait and see. She goes, right. what do you mean wait and see? Till we have to do surgery. She goes, right. no, we're not. Yeah. Okay, chiropractor. I'm a medical doctor. I'm a pediatrician. I need, I need, I need to do this before my daughter because she's seen results of people with scoliosis surgery. Right. If you have surgery, as you know, doc, you're never going to be 100. percent All right. So let's say that a kid comes in and all he's got is a half inch short leg, which a lot of children do. Yep. I mean, they've been study after study that show there's <laughs> the the majority of scoliosis 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 
can cases in children are due to a short leg. Very simple. Okay. And let's say that that child only has a functional curve to start. There's been no bone pathology yet. But over time, by waiting months and years, uh -huh. with that spine being out of balance and overpressurized, the bone actually starts to change. And so by waiting, we're doing a huge disservice to people by not doing a proper evaluation and understanding what the difference is in leg length may be if it's there we're doing a huge disservice to you know thousands and thousands of people hundreds of thousands well it's it's something you can do simply i even teach my patients that are parents how do you check their own kids right it, yeah. it's not, you don't have to you don't have to have a degree in a big student loan to to figure out check someone's feet yeah. Length. And, 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 and teaching them like you like you do too doc is how do you take care of themselves not just let me take care of you all the time yeah well if there's a parent out there i'll tell you a very it's easy to do have your child stripped down to their briefs mm -hmm. have them stand with their feet about eight ten inches apart depending on the size of the child make sure they're putting equal weight on both legs and you just look at them just look at them okay look at the right hip look at the left hip Look at the crest of the lower back. Look at their shoulders. Look at, at the way they're tilting their head. Do they seem out of balance? Uh -huh. That's a good start. Are their knees going inward? Are their knees going outward? Are their feet caving inward? Do their yeah. ankles turn inward? You know, all these things are um, indicators, right? Good. Yep, exactly. And, the way you visualize it, up and down, rotation, yeah, there are three factors at that point are things rotated? Are they straight up and down? Are they yeah. balanced up and right? Does one side of the torso seem more prominent than another? Okay, have the child bend over, look along their back. Is one side of the torso higher than the other? It's a very, very simple things to do. Uh -huh. And believe me when I tell you, um, evaluations done in school are, are uh, seldom done correctly, yeah. you know. Uh, school nurses and gym teachers are not the people uh, who should necessarily be doing scoliosis evaluations. So. It's amazing. And same thing here on the, on the West Coast, too. You take even even they have just <coughs> volunteer moms. Hey, I want to give you a quick 10 minute way to screen out scoliosis and affect this kid's life for the rest of their life if you get it wrong. Right. Sure. And also I always tell every parent, hey, bring your kid in. No charge. I'll show you exactly. You had mentioned, Doc how to check your kid sure this is your yeah. kid not my kid it's not my responsibility it's your responsibility right yeah <laughs> but in spite of that i mean it's you know this message is very hard uh, to reach the general population because most people just have tunnel vision they just do what they do so i you know these podcasts that you're doing it's it's great you know that you're out there you're putting the information out it's fantastic it really is thank you doc and with your book too same thing you've, you've done You've done the hard work, the research to basically get people, hey, this is my message. And this is how I'm going to back it up. It's not yeah. just me talking my opinion. This is my message because I have the research to back up what I'm saying. I do. And the book that I wrote was yeah. based upon what I've learned in the last four decades treating patients. And it's basically a self-help book Good. that people can pick up and read and understand how to heal their own injuries, mm -hmm. what doctors they should see what mm -hmm. treatments they should have, and most importantly, what they should not be doing. And Good. that's eating, stretching, massaging, typically because most of these injuries, as I've said, are soft tissue injuries. Mm -hmm. And in that regard, can I show the book? Of course, that's also, I was about to ask the next thing. I want to see it. All I'm right, in. let's see. Let's see if you can see it. Uh, oh, let me over right there. in front. There we go. There you go. Healing well, the Doc, back, the human back, machine. Up back up a little bit. Back up. There we right go. There. there we go. There we on go. On Amazon. There we go. And I have the link in the show notes too for the Amazon. So we're good to go on that one too. Yeah, but this book is uh it's it's great, it's fantastic. Um and it's basically many of the practices that I use. Um mm -hmm. and things that can be done very, very simply by patients at home. With something to where you, you're giving someone, like I said, the how to help yourself get through a chronic pain injury yeah. and not get stuck in a bunch of medications, not going to work, not get all this test done 
that you don't need and you right. charge thousand dollars for out of your own pocket um at that point you're giving them someone a shortcut to healing yeah absolutely and uh you know as soon as someone reads this book they're going to know hey wait a minute I've, I've been doing this for the last six months and I'm not getting better. Hmm. Uh, and Dr. Hardy says, I'm doing the wrong thing here. Um, maybe I better change track just a little bit. You know, maybe I better start doing a few of these things he's talking about. Maybe I need to get off my painful side when I'm sleeping. Or maybe I shouldn't be sleeping with two pillows. Maybe I shouldn't be doing these stretches that I saw on YouTube. You know, <laughs> Maybe this foam roller that I bought for 1995 that was going to cure all my pains and aches. And I'm doing it every day and I'm getting worse, not better. You know, maybe that hot tub really isn't a good thing. You know, well, it's something where, and, and as you know, Doc, when someone's in pain, they actually listen. They do. They listen. They do. Hey, hey, this is going to happen to me now. Me now. That's okay. Well, how now what do I have to do? Yeah. Now, and the interesting thing about soft tissue pain is, you can stretch it, you can massage it, and you can heat it. And it's going to feel good for about a half an hour. Oh, yeah. And then that pain's going to come right back with a vengeance. You know? Yep. And mm -hmm. people will do that over and over and over again. They'll go to their physical therapist, and he'll stretch them. He'll massage them. He'll rub them down. Mm -hmm. And they walk out of there feeling great. Yep. And a day later, they can hardly walk, right? Mm -hmm. How many times do you hear that? Oh, huge, huge. It's, it's amazing where they they continue to do the same thing over and over again till they go, wait a second, I'm not getting better. Wait a second, now I can't sleep. Over. Wait a second, now I can't lift my kids. Right. Now I can't go to work. Now, now yeah. what do I do? Well, that's how a lot, I, a lot of my patients come to me. Mm -hmm. I mean, they they start with a pain, let's say, of a, a four or five point degree of pain on a 10-point scale. Then they go see the physical therapist and there are six. And then they do some stretches and there are seven. And after maybe two or three weeks, they're a nine or 10. And they're, and finally they say, damn it. Uh, you know what? I'm going to go see that chiropractor and just see, I'm, just I'm see if he can help me. That's where you need some help. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's amazing when people, because they just don't know. I, I just say they're naive. They don't know. So once you give them the message, once your message is out there, and they're in pain enough they're going to listen and i always say chronic pain if you want to call it my my definition my level of chronic pain versus acute pain will start affecting your quality of life sure when it starts doing that okay okay now now what do i have to do because i can't do what i want to do i'm still limiting what i'm doing because yeah. too much pain yeah you know? i have i've had patients carried in into the office and i'm sure you mm -hmm. have too mm -hmm. And I've got to tell you, the women are a lot tougher than the men, you know, generally yeah. speaking. But oh, they're uh, babies. They're babies. Yeah. I, I had, yeah, the stool you use in the office, little little uh, stool. I had someone um, out front with my partner. I work on a Saturday, and we had no staff that morning. And uh, and the patient comes back and goes, hey, doc, I just want to let you know, there's a guy outside in all fours. He can't move. <laughs> what should I do? I'm like, let's get the stool. We put him on the stool. He's like a little turtle walking right. home in the office because it's so sure. much pain. Yeah. Yeah. Well, not only the babies, but I think guys being the abnormals like myself, we wait too long. Right. We can't move. Yeah. And then we look for help. Yeah, it's true. You know, it's something to where I think just in general, overall, I call it good work ethic. I call it stubbornness too. We just, we look at I can fix this myself. Sure. Yeah. 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 And, and doc, doc, what are the, what other tools I had mentioned too in some of the notes? they use for your patients for their own self-help at home? What do you usually give them outside the office? I tell them uh, exactly how they need to sit and sleep. That's number one. Good. I tell them typically uh, exactly what to do and not do in terms Good. of their therapy. So what I would tell to anyone that has pain uh, is, first of all, pick up my book. Good. But, good, good. But, yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. Because because these subjects are somewhat complex, okay? Mm -hmm. But the book is written in such a fashion that it's very, very simple to understand. But I would say, in general, if you have a painful shoulder, a back, a knee, whatever, stop stretching it. Let the tissue start to heal, okay? Good. Don't heat it. Ice it, okay? Good. 
Huh? Don't stretch, don't massage, and don't vibrate. Those are all tissue disruptors. Okay. Yeah. And if you have an injury inside the, a muscle and you're doing those things, you're just re-damaging the, the injury. The injury needs to heal. And to, to heal, it has to be left alone. It has to stay short and non-stretched. So doing avoiding the wrong things and doing ice packs at home, as you know, and not just for 48 hours. You do ice as long as the inflammation lasts, okay? Mm -hmm. And so you want to apply ice packs every hour or so for 15 minutes. You want to have a slightly moistened towel as a buffer. You don't want to leave it on too long because you naturally damage tissue, okay? So that's important. And in terms of therapy, the therapy that I like the best and I gravitate to is ultrasound. Ultrasound done properly. Yes. And I mean, unlike it's done in most physical therapy shops. Yeah. Where you increase the intensity of the ultrasound and you do it for a little bit of a longer period. Okay. Is extremely therapeutic for soft tissue injuries. Right. Yep. Exactly. Great stuff. So that combined with doing the proper non-stretch and icing and postural considerations. Um, and then I also have, as you know, we alluded to, and it's in the book, uh, posture is critically important, like forward head translation, right? Mm -hmm. yep. When you carry your head forward, you're stressing your whole upper body and your neck, the muscles. Yeah. So, um, you know, correcting that, you know, I have a device I invented called the neck correct. And it's um, featured, if you go to YouTube, you can look up the Curve Restore, which was the initial name we used, Curve Restore. Um, and a few other things that I've invented have a carpal tunnel brace, some things okay. of that nature. But uh, there are some things that um, many things patients can do at home. Well, it's amazing when you give them the self-care things to do they're going to come in going, Hey doc, that worked. What else can I do? Hey doc, that worked. What else I can do? Mm -hmm. You'll actually have a busier practice. You're going to, cause you're going to help more. You're going to, you're going to build so much trust for the patient. They're going to ask you for the lottery numbers, right? Right. Yeah. You know, yeah, I, I have a lot of those patients yeah. and then, and then, and then they always ask me, well, when can I start to exercise? When can I start to uh, do some rehab? And the rule of thumb there is you don't do anything like that until you're out of pain. There you go. There you, go. you know, you just have to get out of pain and then you can slowly reintroduce stretching, exercise and other things into your regimen. But you have to do it judici judiciously and you have to start off slow. Guys, Tom, do you want to be better in two months, three months or six months? Right. Go, well, as soon as possible. Good. Don't do anything. I'll tell, I tell them, I'll tell exactly when to start doing things. So you don't have to think about it. Right. Off of Google, I'll tell you exactly what you have to do. Yeah. Yeah. And you know? people are very impatient. They want to get out there. They want to start gardening again. And, you know, a lot of people make the mistake that as soon as they're out of pain, they're out there hitting it. You know, they're gardening, they're doing their activities and any sort of soft tissue injury is not going to be healed when you're out of pain. Pain is representative of inflammation, as you know. Mm -hmm. And when the inflammation is reduced, the pain is reduced, but the tissue is still healing for several weeks and studies have borne that out they've taken uh, radioactive dyes and injected them in the human body and they've seen where they've been uptaken in muscle tissue that's been injured and they've seen as long as even six months after an injury perfect okay. the healing process is still going on it's something to where people like you had mentioned if you i always tell them yeah go ahead garden just i'll see you back on monday when you re injure your back exactly and yeah. i go you know, what do you mean i'm like you'll be back on monday do you want to wait another week so you can not flare it up or do you want to kind of go back into because you have to right. i hate people that that want to run or, or exercise I'm like i go what when is the next contest are you in sure. a show or something a bodybuilding show no okay yeah. give yourself some time you know i do that a lot i see that a lot with kids in athletics oh. you know mm -hmm. they'll say oh i gotta you know we're having a championship next week you know i gotta compete or my coach, uh, you know, makes me do stretches. Mm 
mm -hmm. uh, before the event, you know, and it's it's hard to uh, to diminish that enthusiasm. But, you know, sometimes you have to you have to just put the brakes on that. Well, I always ask him, are you sponsored? Are you making money on it? Right. You know? OK, let's get where you can go to work then. So you can make money and pay the bills. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I'll see kids with aspirations to go on to college or get a scholarship. And there may be a junior. And I'll say, OK, look, you're going to have to take off three months here. Yeah. Oh, but I can't do that. I'll say, yes, you can. Because uh -huh. in three to six months, you're going to be healed. And then you can go back in your senior year and you'll be there. But I said, if you don't listen, you're going to be, you're never going to get better. And and you're going to cause an injury to where you're never going to make college. Right. You're never going to get there. Or right. wherever else you want to be. Sure. No, easy. Enough. One one left field question I put in the notes, too, because you had mentioned in the media kit, is how does the weather influence pain? Sure. Uh, it's very, very simple. Uh, when we have an internal injury, we have swelling. Okay. And we okay. have a low pressure front, like, uh, you know, a rainy day. Mm -hmm. That's low pressure. Now, we're all walking around at sea level with 32, pa square, uh, 32 uh, pounds of pressure per square inch on our bodies, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm a diver, so if you, go down another th uh, if you go down another 32 feet, you get another 32 foot pounds of pressure on your body, right? Yep. Yeah, but the thing is, even at sea level, just walking around, we're under pressure. When we have a low pressure front, like a rainy day, our joints swell more, mm -hmm. our muscles swell more, and we have more pain. Yeah, it's as simple as that. Uh huh. How about when it gets colder too? Yeah. Well, when it gets colder, I that think that our muscles tend to tighten more, mm -hmm. and we're less. We have less flexibility, mm -hmm. and we tend to stretch and strain ourselves more easily. And you, Doc, you you have the experience, you have the knowledge. You put it inside a book. With how many how many references in the book? I think there's 167. The book's about 270 pages. It's, it's it, it covers every condition that I've ever treated. It could probably be a class in a college setting. I have sent it to all the chiropractic colleges, and they they have it in all their libraries. Fantastic! You, you've done a great job making it easy for not only chiropractors to help patients, but also patients help themselves. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and again, you have, you have, we have your website on here too, newearthteachings.com. Uh, we have healing, healing the human machine. Um, yeah. .com also to his Facebook page and his other links too. Uh, doc, what is your biggest takeaway from the show today? How what do you want people to hear? Well, I want people to understand that the reason we have chronic pain is that you're getting bad advice. You're going to untrained doctors. Uh, stop. If you want to get better, go see the people who know how to heal you, how to treat you. Um, and if you're interested, I have about 20 videos on YouTube Good. dealing with all kinds of topics. And you can look those up under Healing the Human Machine or with my name, Dr. Calvin Hargis. And there's lots of information there. And link for YouTube is on the, on the show notes, too. So that's going to be on there also, too. Yeah, thank you. Well, Doc, show the book one more time with your face. I want to take a picture with you with a big smile. Let's see if I can do that. No. You got it. You got it. A little bit. Let's go. Bring it on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. This way. There we go. There we go. Ready? One, two, three. There you go. There it thank is. Doc, Doc did a phenomenal job. Thank you for being on the show. Thanks for watching, guys. Hang out for one second, Doc. I'm going to stop the show, but I'll see you in the back in the back show. Okay, give me one yeah. second. Thank you. Thanks, guys.